The biggest event to hit Lexington since the pandemic began is wrapping up tonight. Thousands of people packing into Keeneland for Railbird Festival. The concern going into it was the potential spread of COVID-19. But yesterday, the long lines dominated talk on social media. Two hours just for a beer or even to fill up a water bottle. And when day one ended, thousands were left looking for a ride home. Austin Pollock picks it up from there. These are all rejected or missed calls from Saturday night on Randy Glover's phone. 1045, 1048, 1050, 1050, 1051. He's the owner of Big Blue Taxi in Lexington. We had, um, I must say, well over 200 to 300 phone calls and one in one night. And typically we'll get between 20 to 30 calls in one day. That's what happens when 30 to 35,000 people tried to leave the first day of the Railbird Music Festival. I'm trying to hire drivers right now. And there, there just isn't enough people to handle that. Glover says there were only two drivers working on a Saturday night into early Sunday morning. When we tried to see if an Uber was even available after the festival, the app showed this at 12:11 a.m. No cars available. Whenever the show releases, everybody is coming out at the same time. And Pollock reporting, of course, the same situation happening tonight as Dave Matthews Band wraps up the festival, but hopefully those long lines will be easier to navigate. Transportation, just one of the issues that thousands of attendees faced out at Railbird last night, and the organizers promised to make some changes for today. LX18's Christiana Ford takes us back inside Railbird for day two. Hashtags fail bird and firebird were going around social media Saturday with people hashing out frustrations about the long lines and lack of water. But day two did look a lot differently, even with big headliner Dave Matthews band. People say it wasn't perfect, but they did make a lot of changes. Skipping through the Facebook comments on Real Bird's official page, you'd think day one was a disaster. It was definitely uh, as bad as people say. I said the only thing they were really prepared for, honestly, was the porta potties. People saying they almost died from lack of water. Hour and a half for some yeah. for water and and drinks, and uh, there was no getting food. The lines were way too long. Some calling the event fail bird and comparing it to the infamous and fraudulently marketed fire festival. It's funny to laugh at it first. Yes, absolutely. I was like, okay, that's kind of funny, but at the same time, it's literally not the same. Like all of the acts are here, like. Fire Festival was an actual scam. Like, all, yes, there's been some mess ups, and yes, it could be more staffed and organized, but it's not. Like, people are commenting saying it was like the worst day of their lives. That's baloney. But fans came back for various reasons. So, why'd you come back today? It's been a two day pass. <laughs> <laughs> and our favorite is playing tonight. Fans still came back, anticipating big headliner, the Dave Matthews Band, and say things were much better. Bar lines were lower, water lines were less, so it's, it's better. <laughs> we saw the changes for ourselves. Lots of water. Organizers say they placed 50,000 water bottles around the grounds, more refill stations, and new rules to allow guests to bring in water of their own. We brought a cup. Yeah, we're going to fill up and uh, make sure we're hydrated. At some points, there were long lines for beer, but for the most part, guests going home happy. Organizers listened. It's a good thing that they, they took notice and uh, hopefully it just keeps on getting better. Despite all the problems, unlike Fire Festival, people say what they came for was the music and the music delivered. In Lexington, Christiana Ford, LEX 18 News. We'll find out exactly how many people showed up over the past two days this week. Organizers believe they had around 30,000 to 10 each day, the largest event in Lexington since the start of the pandemic.